Yes, well, as a as a team, we've we've had experience of making two Disney nature films. Now, we did African Cats, which which um, was I say was a big drama, a lot of kind of action, and big kind of characters. Um, and then we did Chimpanzee, which was a, in a way a far more gentle film, and often very funny. And what we love about Bears, it's a kind of the best of both. On one hand, you've got these huge animals that are powerful and do have great dramas in their lives. But on the other hand, you know, they're like cuddly Labradors. I mean, they're funny. Bears are very, very funny, adorable animals. And, and they're also social, like chimpanzees. So you have a lot of, a lot of deep kind of um, emotional stories and funny stories mixed with this drama that kind of blows out from time to time into, into, into the story. So we're really excited about bears. One of the mothers is, is, uh, um, has newborn cubs and um, she's an inexperienced mother. She's actually, uh, this is her first litter, we believe. And it's all a bit of a trial, having these new very, very vulnerable cubs that she has to try and lead through bear society. There are two other big characters who are two big males. And one of them is, is the big sort of dominant male, probably almost certainly the father of both, both these cubs. And um, he's big, powerful, but actually quite gentle and certainly of no threat to, to the cubs. The other male is an underdog male, and he's actually dangerous. And um, he's trying to make his way amongst the big kings of this Alaskan wilderness. Um, but he's actually, for him, it's a real struggle. And because it's a struggle, he's often hungry. He's often pushed to the edge of society. And that sadly makes him dangerous, especially to our mothers with their small, small cubs. You can see that there's affection between them. You can see that they, um, they enjoy each other's company. And um, most of bear life, a lot of people think of bears as being big, aggressive animals. That is just so far from the truth. The, 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 the vast majority of bear life and society is friendly, sort of, you could almost say, collaborative, social. And we really want to bring this out in the film. Um, they're very, very endearing animals. These Alaskan bears that we're filming in Katmai are the biggest bears in the world. Um, some of them actually weigh more than polar bears, which people people believe, though people always believe that polar bears are bigger than brown bears or grizzly bears. Um, in the case of these Katmai bears, that is not the case. Some of these are the biggest bears in the world. And they're so big because every year um, they get this, these huge numbers of salmon running into the, the rivers where they, where, they, where they live. The brown bear or grizzly bear that lives inland away from the salmon is nothing like as big as the bears that we're dealing with. Um, so the whole, the whole salmon story is an intricate part of their lives, an intricate part of our story. We'll have cameras that can move along with the bears. Um, there's obviously going to be some quite sophisticated aerial photography um, and also underwater photography when the bears are fishing and so on and so, so forth. So we're actually building quite a lot of technique ar around it. But by and large, our approach is to try to create a film where you're completely unaware of the technique and how it's been shot. What we're always looking for is trying to get this kind of immersive experience where we're gonna put the audience actually into bear society and it's just going to unfold as if you are a bear. And so we are using quite a lot of new techniques and ways of doing things, but the aim is that you never notice any of that, that the aim is just that to try to put you right in, for you to become, as a member of the audience, a bear and see what it's like. 
why Katmai is is so good is that it's it's a place where which has been undisturbed by people for very many years. It's a well-established national national park. It's in a very remote place, and the bears actually don't react to people at all. And so, what you can do in Katmai is you can actually wander around as a film crew and the bears will largely ignore you. And as wildlife filmmakers, that's the perfect situation we're looking for. We want a place where effectively we're invisible and then you can just watch um, bear society play out. We want young audiences to come away from these films thinking, wow, these are fantastic animals and we really understand them. Because what will happen then with the young, you know, the, the young audiences, kids grow up fast. And then these, these children, if they enjoy these films, they end up never forgetting the brown bear. They always think, I remember that film, and they're, they're just wonderful. And the brown bear becomes part of their lives. Well, they will then go off and develop their careers and wherever they go. But if they all, in a way, sponsors of the brown bear, and they've all think, yeah, you know, they hear, oh, we can do something for the bear now. We can take some kind of action. We we can do something. Then the film has done a marvelous, a fantastic job, because it has changed attitude and it's led to action that will, in the end, help these incredible animals. And I think at Disney Nature, that's that's absolutely the chain of what we're always thinking of: um, is how do we engage? How do we entertain? And then how do we change people's attitudes? And then how can that, in the long run, could lead to action that actually gives something back to our stars?